Good morning and welcome to the LNG Marketplace Weekly News Flash. Here is the latest news we have selected for you from all over the media. Electricité de France, also called EDF, has entered into a 20-year liquefied natural gas sales and purchase agreement with Venture Global Plaquemes LNG, the liquefaction terminal developer. Under the agreement, the EDF will purchase 1 million tons per annum of LNG for a 20-year term starting on the commercial operation dates of the Venture Global Plaquemes LNG export facility under development along the Mississippi River south of New Orleans. Read more about this project on RigZone. The coastal gas link pipeline connected to a massive liquefied natural gas export project in Kitimat is not the only gas project to be facing challenges on the West Coast. Last week, the U.S. Energy Regulator dealt Calgary-based Pembina Pipeline Corps a surprise setback in its bid to build the $8 billion U.S. dollars project on the U.S. West Coast. The U.S. Federal Energy Regulatory Commission voted to delay a decision on the gas export facility on the Oregon coast that would send Canadian gas to Asian markets. It was the second time FERC had denied or deferred the Jordan Cove application and stymies effort by landlocked Canadian gas producers to find new markets beyond Alberta. This piece of news we found on Financial Post. Cryopreak LNG Solutions Corporation, based in Richmond in British Columbia, has completed the largest ever North American delivery of liquefied natural gas by truck, with the shipment going to power the silver tip mine on the Yukon, B.C. border, owned by Cura Silver Tip Holdings, a subsidiary of Cura Minings. The shipment of the LNG totaled approximately 18,000 gallons and was made possible by Cryopeak's proprietary Super B train. Cryopeak's mission is to provide LNG to remote locations in the most reliable, sustainable, and economic manner possible. Check the financeyahoo.com website for more information. According to Kalanish Energy, India's largest liquefied natural gas importer, Petronet LNG, is reportedly pursuing a flexible 10-year deal for LNG starting in 2024. The company is telling potential suppliers that it is interested in purchasing 1 million tons per annum of LNG on a delivered ex-ship basis. The contract would be priced using a formula linked to both the U.S. Henry's Hub natural gas futures as well as the Dutch TTF gas futures, which is uncommon in India, where most of the contracts are long-term and linked to crude oil prices. The U.S. will become the third most important LNG exporting country with a total capacity of 8.9 billion cubic feet per day by the end of 2020. That's according to the data and analytics company Global Data, which also say the second wave of LNG projects consist of plants which have received an approval by the U.S. Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, but are not yet under construction. You can read more about this on gasworld.com. Also, according to RigZone, Thanks to a global glut of LNG, prices for fuel have fallen dramatically. Given the slump, market watchers had expected LNG customers to cancel U.S. cargoes. This article is from Bloomberg. In this case, Spanish utility owner Natural Energy Group SA reportedly decided against taking delivery of two shipments from Chenier Energy, the top U.S. LNG exporter. Global Multi-Sector Industry Coalition, CLNG, announced the results of its latest independent investment study, which highlights the commercial benefits of LNG as a marine fuel for a new build of 210,000 deadweight ore carrier sailing from Australia to China. The study illustrates strong returns on investment for LNG as a marine fuel on net present value basis over a conservative 10-year horizon. The modeling analysis is bolstered by compelling payback periods of two to four years for the new build Capazize on this major ore trade corridor. Check the Hellenic Shipping News for more details on that project. U.S.-based Accelerate Energy has launched a new wholly owned subsidiary to offer ship management services for the LNG market, following the award of interim documents of compliance under the International Safety Management Code from the Republic of Marshall Islands and Belgium government. You can read more about this on Riviera Maritime. That's it for this week. Tune in next week for more news. And until then, thanks for tuning in.